Good afternoon, Houston. This is attorney Anthony Push from the Push and Win Law Firm wishing you all a safe drive home. But in the event you do get involved in an accident, you know who to call. 833-PUSH-WIN. We push, you win. Uh, you're just tuning in. You're just trying to get yourself together for the last work day of the week. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Rule and Ryan Show. Don't go on 59. Yeah, 59 in the spur. There was a fatal right. motorcycle uh, accident in the middle of the night, and it is backed up. Looks like it's at Shepherd. Yeah. And, you know, we were saying off the air that, you know, motorcycles always give me the creepies because I know too many people who have lost their lives or know someone who lost their life on a motorcycle, and I get, like, why you want to have one. But if you have one, you should, like... To put it on a trailer and take it out to the country and ride it for fun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> driving, are- driving a cycle in Houston, I mean, just our drivers, man. Yeah, and, and I feel like you can't go that, you can't really enjoy it as much. Yeah, you can't yeah. Traffic, You're stuck there. Nothing worse than sitting and there. Did we talk about the no, uh, helmets? Well, a long time ago, we talked about it. it's, it's your choice over yeah. 21 to wear one. They can't actually give you a ticket for not wearing one, but really it's like, I feel like if I was a cop, I'd be like, well, you're less choosing to be a bozo. I mean, you're playing yeah. Russian roulette if you don't have a helmet. If you're not wearing that. But it looks alone. much cooler without the helmet. Yeah, you, right. Uh, much cooler. Right, my whole life, sure. they grew up in Illinois and, and, and Texas, and they both have the same law. No helmets. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I, just, I don't know they, why people resist science and safety. It's the thinning of the herd, as they say. I guess. No, I, yeah, I don't well, see to Eric's anybody point about being suffer. out in the country... What I can see how guys on motorcycles out in the country are not going to wear a helmet because they're like, "What do we put that thing on for?" I'm just going down to the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, well, it's fun, man. But you're I mean, get you can go brain dead of ten miles an hour. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen stories yeah, of people like sliding into a That's curb true. or just off a bicycle. You fall off your own, like actual bicycle, not a motorcycle, and they hit their head on the curb and it's over. Look at all the kids. Helmets are super, super important. Kids are on bicycles. I see them with no helmets, <sighs> like in West Jew area and Bel Air. I'm like, or even on. electric they, scooters. I don't want to be cool. I'm like. Or you're electric not, you're scooters. not gonna be cool if you're oh, right. the scooters. Electric yeah. scooters, you gotta wear a helmet. You gotta wear a helmet on electric bikes. Gosh, I think the scooters, you might want to wear some type of uh, wrist guard too, because you know you that's fall. what you're always catching yourself road on. Road rash. Yeah, road rash, and you you snap that little wrist. Oh, mm-hmm. oh lord. I don't wear a helmet on my electric bike on the beach. Why not? Eric? Well, sand is a little more forgiving. I just uh, true. <laughs> yeah, you gotta dent the sand. I just don't. <laughs> That's one place I won't do it. <laughs> want to feel the breeze in your hair. But if I was on, when I used to take it around, like, Bel Air and stuff, I'd put a helmet on sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, there's cars aiming for you. Yeah. There's people, and you ride a bike, you gotta, I feel like you can't just pick and choose the sidewalk and then the, the road, the road and sidewalk. I feel like you gotta. Oh, yeah, pick one. Pick one. I don't mind, like, little kids on the sidewalk, you know, because I, I always take the sidewalk and I'm going out for a walk. But it's like when I see adults riding their bike on this, it's a sidewalk, not a side bike. Oh, I don't know. It, sometimes when I ride my bike to the gym, there'll be a school bus coming down my street, and it's uh-huh. just not wide enough for me and the school bus to be no. on that street. So I'll slip over onto the sidewalk right then and there just for my own safety and well be. Well, we're getting more and more bike lanes, put it, you know, being yes. more determined in the city of Houston. But when you don't have a bike lane, then where do you go? Because people want to be on the street because it's a more even pavement yes definitely. versus the sidewalk you might oh, have man. more of a chance of falling over yeah yeah because you hit a twig or you hit uneven concrete and all this stuff and but then again the sidewalk you're just like okay well Some of these sidewalks bike coming through suck too oh i know They're all it's the uneven the cracks everything like that can't remember how many times on uh halloween trick-or-treating where trip. i'm watching the kids make sure they don't fall meanwhile i'm stumbling <laughs> like a fool <laughs> when i was using my tricycle I should wear a helmet on that, right? On my tricycle. And she's not talking about when she was like six. No, she has an like adult trike. She's like 36. Yeah, it's a cool <laughs> one. It's got two wheels in the back, one in the front, and a basket in the back. I still left that you tipped it over. And I crashed it. <laughs> I know. How because do you manage it, that? Because think about it. If you've never been on a bicycle before, like, yes, I've seen people ride bikes. I never was the child on the bike. When I first got on that tricycle, I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. You just go faster and faster. Wow, this really works your quad. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have to turn. But there's a lip to the driveway that's too big. And if you go at it at the wrong angle, it's going to pop you. Mm-hmm. Like you go straight on to it, mm-hmm. and it just threw me right off. I feel, like you would, uh, <laughs> I, think, I feel like you would fall over on a Peloton. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm not. The so Peloton plenty injury. Of I've been on <laughs> the, the uh, stationary off. bikes. I would not fall off that, Eric. Thanks. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, anyway. Those things suck, man. You got to lock yourself in with those shoes. 
on the Peloton. Yeah. I don't like being locked That's into why I didn't like You so do have bad luck on those kind of things. I mean, all I know is the station, uh, only once did this show ever go out and do go-karting together, indoor go-karting, and you managed to crash your go-kart and lose a wheel. The first well, lap. nobody uh. told me that it, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> right, right there, driver, like, we're going, we're, we're going around the loop. <laughs> she went straight. <laughs> she went straight into the wall, and I see a wheel sitting on the side. Oh, like, my I'm like, how did she do that? She crashed it right into the wall. As a child. I never did it as a child, so oh, I didn't know. God. But you've the been in a, in a circle, and somehow you went straight. Right, but for some reason, Kevin, I thought the go-kart was like both gas. I thought it was like electrically c- controlled. It's it's not like Astroworld <laughs> when we were kids. You but, get on those old cars that are on the track that move for you. Yeah, I thought they but, were controlling. No, but hilarious. you could smell and hear the engines. They're like... So that was electric. This was a place where you know Jumpsuits. Yeah, yeah, where the yeah. Did I put a helmet? Uh, yeah, and the helmet. Uh, that must go, have been way before my like really 60 miles. Yeah, but well, now these ones, on? I think, were only going like about thirty. But still, that's fast when you're on indoor track. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how you knew it wasn't because he had a like a lawnmower cord and pulled it to start the engine. <laughs> I just laughed. I just remember you went straight. <laughs> yeah. I'm like looking at him. Where's Rolla? I'm like, oh my god, that car is missing a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> And I, yet I survived. That was good team team building. Yeah. Yeah. We should go back and do that again sometime. Yeah, no I would love no. that. Let's go to Andretti uh, karting. Yeah, never oh, that's I a lot of fun. That place. Yeah. Love that place. I want to do that. I've never been there. Oh, no, it's, a, it's so cool. Well, coming up today on the Rule and Ryan show, the summer of 2023, we'll give you all the details on what you're going to win to make you a finalist for $10,000. And coming up next, does any should anybody say, oh, I knew that was going to happen. I already knew that before. All of you guys knew that. You know when you have anybody in your office or your friend circle or at school, oh, yeah, I already knew that was going to happen. Yeah. When it comes to this Titanic the office know thing, it all. Well, just, it's just kind of the hubbub. We'll talk about that. Here's your weather for today. Okay, so, yeah, we did get some storms last night. I know you guys didn't feel it where you live, but there are still a lot of people without power. Centerpoint saying that they will not have power fully restored across the Houston area until Sunday, probably. Uh, looks like a high of 96 today. Lots of sun this afternoon. Right now it's 82 degrees and 615 on the Roland Ryan Show. Celebrity Scoop on 104.1 KRBE. Okay, first let me remind you that it's the summer of 2020 free at 820, 120, and 520. We give you a chance to win something fabulous, and that makes you a finalist for $10,000. $10,000. the end of the summer, one of our lucky finalists, we're going to draw a name, $10,000. That'd be awesome. Oh, awesome. Uh, I'm on, just double checking, is it still the RuPaul Drag Race that we're giving away today? Yeah, what's the um, qualifying prize today? Yeah, because I mean, we're doing four packs of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race and the Work the World Tour. It's always something different. Coming to Houston July 2nd, sometimes for the weekend. Which is an amazing tour. Me and Special K went with Sam last time. We did a little triple date. Oh. Yeah. Fun? Yes. Uh, I definitely the date enjoyed. The show. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Well, we couldn't really talk much because the show was going on. It was really cute, though. They had all the winners and, and some of the losers. Yeah. A lot of your favorites are going to be there, especially the notable ones from H Town. Can you sing the BK song for me while you're looking for the prize? <laughs> Hold up, it whopper, goes whopper, 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 BK. Oh well, actually, guys, have it your way. Today we have Sam Smith. Oh wow! Yeah, eight twenty this morning. Sam Smith tickets makes you a finalist for $10,000. Okay. Um, just a couple things I'm going to cover here. Uh, Mario Lopez is on the short list now for the Wheel of Fortune hosting position. Mario Lopez as the I like host? That. They say because the Latino population is the largest growing TV audience in the United States right now, and that's why they're possibly considering him. Study show. Uh, a Nielsen exec, exec, I mean, sorry, says, I think there's a really important marker for how Latinos are influencing America's most watchable entertainment. It might uh, it's it's important to have give Latinos the show a little bit camera. of youth, too, because I think their demographic is... Youth, he's 50. Well, I know, but <laughs> their, current <laughs> demogra- their current demographic is like 80. I'm just saying, yeah. The demographic <laughs> of Real like Fortune is you're somewhere, the TV is on, and that's what's on, and you're just watching it on yeah. mute. Yeah, I don't think I've watched that, that show watched. in decades. Okay, other things. Now that Barbie is out, Margot Robbie and uh, out. Ryan Gosling. Coming, coming out. Well, it's going to be out, but all the trailers are starting to hit again even more. They're full right. trailers. So they're kind of bombarding you like, Barbie's coming, oh, Barbie's is, coming. I don't know if you were here when the mod went off on this. Like, oh, I'm he like, is. I'm fangirling obsessed. over this. I can't wait for this movie. It's going to be so good. So well, funny. Barbies have always been <laughs> a super top toy when it comes to purchasing things for kids. I mean, my girls have loved Barbies forever. So that's nothing new. But there are some toys that came and went, and they were like the mania toys. Like the knockoffs? Or? No, no, the big toys. I like, remember Tickle Me Elmo was very hard to find. Oh, yeah. In the 80s, it was a Cabbage Patch doll that was like, insane to try and get. 
Then I remember when I first started working at KRBE, and there was a big thing about like we got a Furby for the morning show to give away. Is that the little like we have a Furby? Oh with yeah, the bug eyes. basically Gizmo bug from eyes, yeah. the Gremlins, yeah. but it cuter. Does. It looks like it's that. an owl. It does yeah. look like a Gremlin. Wow, it looks like a Gremlin, yeah, but it's yeah. an owl and a Gremlin hybrid. And it would like I don't know what kind of noise it would make. Like blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really talk. <laughs> Like a turkey. Anyway, the Furby is back. It will be available for the first time since 2016, and the yes. new version comes with five voice-activated modes with more than 600 responses. It will also interact with other Furbies, so you can buy multiple, and they'll talk to each other. They also respond to hugs, Evil. pats, belly tickles, and shaking. Now, here's a picture of the new Furby. It's Furbies. available online now on Amazon for 70 bucks. It's going to hit the shelves at most major retailers like next month. Worst nightmare. Seventy bucks. They don't, yeah. they they don't like really. Gremlins. Yeah, they don't really do anything. They're just like, like Ryan. I no, bought, now they do. He bought our my son, and he bought his daughter the squawker. Oh, parrot. It like, oh, it was like seventy five squawkers. Bucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this thing sucked. It could, you had fake uh, crackers. You could give it, or it could talk. It could do all this stuff. Make oh, noises out of nowhere. What would record you? You could say uh, you I could say something, and it would spit it back in like parrot speak. And that's oh. how mommy and daddy got divorced on roses because <laughs> the squawker <laughs> recorded the conversation with the mistress. I think it's still in a drawer somewhere. Oh, you kept it. Yeah, that squawkers are seventy five bucks. Over got 40, played with for a day, and then it went in a drawer. It's no Teddy Ruxman. No. Teddy Ruxman. Over 40 million Furbies were sold in the first three years they were available. People collected them. Sparkers is like big. with Rula buying a, begging for a Casio little recorder. Oh, SK-8. I loved it so much, and I didn't know how to play the piano. Nobody got me less. All you do is you hit demo, and you pretend to play it. Look at me. Well, then once I got it, I go, what do I do with it now? I don't know how to play this. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay, the submersible officially imploded on Sunday. There were no survivors. The Coast Guard confirmed this. Uh, the debris field was discovered on the seafloor about 1,600 feet from the Titanic's bow. Oh, Is wow. it bow or bow? Bow. 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 Yes. They bow, identified bow. the Titan's tail cone and several other parts, and they say it was a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. Likely caused by pressure failure, but I mean, it is unclear exactly when it happened. But most say it occurred on Sunday. So mm-hmm. all the efforts to try and find this thing before they lost air, there was no reason for the, that. The Navy heard the boom on Sunday. Oh, they did. There is a recording that the Navy has because they have microphones everywhere. So you're saying now there's a conspiracy? No, they there's no it. conspiracy. They knew. Well, they knew. No, some people are saying that. There's there's, some people are saying the president kept this. Quiet and, until now, so it, t- it would take away from all this stuff of the sun. No. Well, wouldn't you want oh that? my god, now <laughs> that you're is such going crap. conspiracy. Is, yeah. If you <laughs> really, if that was hat really on. true, you would have wanted that to happen immediately, no, so no. there was never they any want, story. They're saying because they want who's they but that's been going on all week for a long time. They wanted people talking about it for like four days about the submarine. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, you know, the one thing I will Eric, say is shining light on a crap they, it's, fake it's, headline. It's absolutely, it's like just a it's. Anyway, there. back yeah. to the submarine. It's an absolute yeah, tragedy. I'm, I'm so, you know, I I'm, I'm feel so bad for those families. But there is a silver lining. At least they didn't suffer for a long period of time. They, it oh, had no. to be instantaneous. Yes. Like, like boom, you're if, dead. If you just imagine, you know, you're finished with a can of Coca-Cola and, and you squeeze it. it. Yeah. Oh, God. That, that that was they were instantly because, turned to So nothing. James Cameron was talking, doing interviews, because he's been down. He's now been to the Titanic. Mm-hmm. He's logged more hours on the Titanic than the original captain of the Titanic, wow. James Cameron, because he built the submersible, help, helped to build submersibles that can get him down there, submersibles, that can get him down there so that he could get all that footage. I mean, he mm-hmm. created the cameras to even film that stuff for the Titanic back in the 90s. Yes. It's crazy. So, you know, of course, everyone's going to him as, like, his expert view on this. And he, he was saying, like, he is an expert, but he was like, well, I, I pretty much knew on I mean, on Monday, it was over. Like, it was over on Monday, or all these efforts to find them was futile because it was just over. I mean, there's just no way. Because they did not heed the warnings of how they had built the submersible. Oh, he yeah. saw and a flaw in it? Yeah, he, he said it that it, they had been warned many times that they're not they're not following the protocol of how you're supposed to build these things, mm-hmm. according mm-hmm. to what Cameron was saying. Sure and when be you some don't, huge and, he, and he found it very odd, like I, the irony of the parallel of the actual Titanic not heeding the warnings of the ice field they're going into at too high speed, mm-hmm. and then this submersible did not heed the There's warnings. The, the aunt of the to go down to the Titanic. Nineteen-year-old said that he didn't oh, want to go. He was scared, oh, so hard. But his day, he felt like he, his Father's Day, so he had to do oh, it. With his dad. Oh, oh worse. gosh. Okay, and one of the five that passengers sucks. actually was. The, the pilot, Paul Henri Nargelet, he's a Titanic expert and a former French Navy commander. He was very good friends with James Cameron for like 25 years. Wow. 
He said he's one of the guys that really knew what he's doing to go down there and all the things, show them where they're going. But, you know, some people like space, some people like water. Either way, there's a risk. Some people like their couch. Yeah, what? exactly. I like my couch. <laughs> exactly. I like my house. Sure, I can probably die of something, diabetes or something. Or I mean, I prior to this bad. accident, if they said, here's a free ticket, I would have went down. Hell, no. of course breathe. you would have. I have anxiety just thinking. <laughs> about I mean, I'm not going to pay money. That. The thing, way it looks, only two people could maybe comfortably lay down in there. You put five in there. I feel like if you get it free, there's a catch. Woo! Wait, if Woo! if Kiss was on that submersible, <laughs> Ryan would pay for it. Yeah, yeah. do a little concert. It's our last concert underwater. <laughs> <laughs> underwater history making. All right, we're doing open phone Friday. Seven one three three nine zero K R B E. That's three seven. I mean, sorry, three nine zero five seven two three. That is our phone number. Give us a call. It's Open Phone Fridays next on The Rule and Ryan Show. 104.1 KRB. Back to The Rule and Ryan Show. It is Open Phone Friday. 713-390-KRBE. You can call us about anything you want. Maybe you're stuck in traffic right now. If you're on 59 at Shepherd, where the cops cut off, where there was a fatal accident and they shut down the freeway. Headed towards the spur. I'm just mesmerized watching the footage of the blockage because if you're like in the first 10 in each row of those lanes, in each lane, right, and you see the cop car lights ahead of you, there is no exit there. Like, no. you're just on that block of the freeway where there is no exit, so they can't really have you move. Like, if you're way further back, they can try and get you off the freeway and get you on the feeder. But if you're, like, right behind it, you're just going to have to hang out and And this happened hours ago. Sit. I'm sorry about that, and I hope to entertain you while you sit and distract Remember, you. though, I mean, if you're really upset, somebody lost their life, so it could be worse for you. Well, somebody's about to lose their yeah. ladder. <laughs> their pants. Yeah. Well, if their yeah. gas is low, like they're like, okay, I'll just get down. That's when you turn yeah. your car off. Oh yeah, I would be like just getting out of my car and stretching and doing lunges. Yo, I turn my car off at a, a train. Like I'm like, oh, this really? is gonna be forever. I'm so- really? Oh yeah. yeah. I'll put it in I, I don't blame you. But Trains I don't give me anxiety if I'm stuck at a train stop. That one right <laughs> really? there before. Trapped. Where's it at? Yeah. It's right before Buffalo Speedway. Yep. Well, that whole thing at Newcastle, the train Newcastle, Newcastle. Goes that's all it. Yeah, goes Newcastle, all yeah. through Newcastle. Uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I got caught. I think we would have last week. that one. We only have one, like the West Park over West Park goes over it. And then yeah. also, when you're going few, on Yale, go yeah, but something. if you're on, if you like, go on Yale, you go under it. It's cool. Yeah, don't all do from Bel Air to uh, like Richmond, West. It crosses through that's some of the busiest streets, and I I had it stop last week. It just stopped, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And I did have to go to the bathroom. I was like, ah. Uh, what, is it Andrea or Andrea? Pinched it. <laughs> uh, Hi, Andrea, Andrea. Welcome to the Rule and Ryan Show. Hi, good morning. Good it's Andrea. Morning. Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> Welcome to Open Phones Friday. What's on your mind? Um, I actually was curious what Kevin was saying about the microphones underwater that the Navy has that could have recorded the submersible um, implosion. He was talking about it, and then Eric kind of cut him off. So, I was <laughs> yeah. Thinking, I think well, he, he only read the same stuff that we read, and so don't, it didn't go into deep, deep, deep detail. It just told. All right, Kevin. Now's thing. your chance. Now do a deep research. dive. Here we go. We're going to talk about a microphone on a submarine. Here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, well, what's the question you the, have, Andrew? What do you want to know? Uh, uh, no, she's right. The, oh, the okay. Navy, but this was on Sunday. The Navy detected an acoustic signature consistent with an implosion mm. and in the general area where the vessel was diving and lost communication with the mothership. But they probably didn't know. So that's what you said. That it was down there. Well, listen here. Why? Why did they hear that? Because they have they, as in our U.S. Navy, has microphones all over the place listening for enemy submarines. So that's why. And they also won't tell you what system it is in the article because it's a protected system, I guess. But mm-hmm. just so you know, Russia, we're listening. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked in Dallas, uh, we had a big listener that uh, in the '80s. He worked on submar- it was submarines, and he would go to Russia. They would go right underneath where their subs were, really, and take photos. And they were like praying that it was they weren't going to like yeah dive, just dive. And it was crazy oh, the story he told us stuff that you couldn't say too much because obviously mm-hmm. they said who's that guy who's the guy that did the hunt for Red October? Oh, uh, Tom Clancy. Yeah, a lot of his stuff they had to go talk to him. Wow. Uh, and say, how did you get this information? He's did like, you know this? He's like, I was just making it up. It was so stuff. spot on. With a lot wow. of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Back, mm-hmm. Well, well, back in the days when there was... The Cold crazy. War was still... Like, they were going underneath their subs to take mm-hmm. photos to see what kind of you know equipment they had and stuff. Hunt for Red October is a good one to oh, yeah. watch. And that one also makes me not be able to breathe well. 
You think those are going to go, uh, like, people are going to watch a lot of Titanic and... Wait, Tom Clancy yeah. has movies? Tom Clancy's a writer. Oh, yeah. He did He did. Yeah, I know the he's books, a writer. Yeah. Right, The Hunt for Red October. Rainbow. He, he created Patriot the whole games? Jack Ryan character. Yeah, Patriot okay. Games. Um, Clear and Present Danger. That's the first one I ever saw that was really good with Harrison Ford. And ben Affleck has been that character. Alec Baldwin's mm-hmm. been that character. John Krasinski. Uh, John Krasinski is on mm-hmm. the Amazon show. Even Chris Pine was briefly for one movie. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Andrea, for listening. Have a great weekend. We're moving on to Janine for Open Phones Friday at 713-390-5723. Hi, Janine. Good morning. Oh, my God. Hi. <gasps> oh, my God. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, my God. This is crazy. <laughs> I love you guys. Yay. Thank you. That's so nice to oh hear. We love God. you, too. Are you at some speaker I at work think- so people can believe you that you're on the radio? Oh, my God. No, actually, I, I just woke up. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a small business owner, and... Right now is the time to to do my computer work, so I literally listen to you guys while I do my work, my computer work. What do you sell in your small business, Janine? What's your small Um, business? I do t-shirts, tumblers. Hmm. um, You have a cricket machine? all kinds of stuff. We need a Rule and Ryan tumbler. Ooh, (gasps) that'd be nice. (gasps) Off the air, you can email me and I can see if we can buy a... Do you do it like with a cricket machine, like vinyl monogramming, or what do you do with it? I do more like sublimation, um, bleach shirt. Um, I'm trying to get into the uh, screen printing. Oh, okay. Um, and my husband has his own website as well. Him and I both have our own website. Um, what, what's your website, Janine? Uh, it's Abby Collo Works. I'm sorry, I can't understand because yeah. I think there's a phone's a little. Uh, it's, um, I think you don't sell phones. Muffled. Abby. Yeah. <laughs> Abby Column Works? Is that what you said? Column? Spell it for us. Uh, at, um, A-B-B-Y. Yeah, there you go. K-A-H-L-O Works. Okay, W-O-R-K. Yeah. Got it. See, now yeah. you're off speaker. Now we can yeah. hear you better. That's why we tell everybody, get off speaker. Yep. So the we Bluetooth can hear you or nice speaker. clear. <laughs> um, but that's cool, Janine. Thank you so much you for listening to our or? show. Yeah, what do you, you want to chat about? Hi? Guys, honestly, I'm just so nervous. I've listened to you guys for years, and today I was like, you know what? I'll just call. I don't know if you or not, but I'm just going to call. Uh-oh. You yeah. went back to speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you did that. Well, thank you for listening, Janine, and we appreciate you so much. Good luck on you your Call us uh, anytime business. you want. Yes, on, on a better thank phone. You so much. Amazing day! Oh, thank you. Me you too, too sweetie. Uh, seriously, uh, hold on. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, hold on. I'm keep her on hold. I'll, I'll give you my email so we can got you. buy some tumblers from you or something. All right, who's next? Let's go to Heather on line three. Hi, welcome to the Rule and Ryan Show, Heather. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, morning. Hey. what's going on with you? I have, a, I have a question for you guys. So mm-hmm. I listen on the radio every day, and it seems like I hear like the same five or six popular songs like right now flowers is so popular well i liked it at first but now i've heard it a thousand times i'm like oh man i'm tired of hearing that song (laughs) so do you guys ever get tired of hearing the same songs over and over again every day no we don't actually hear them that much because you know here on the rule and ryan show we talk a lot yeah we don't hear them that much we we don't play as many songs as the other hours of the show but You kind of just get used to your environment. I mean, I'll, I think they're like Flowers, Miley Cyrus. I think some people got burned out on that because it's been on Instagram and Reels and all that. Mm. I still enjoy it. Yeah, but like, a lot of times when the songs are playing, we're conferring about what we're doing which is next. Like it's during the day, though, too. Like mm-hmm. Kevin Audrey on stuff. I don't mind it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's about it's working and then working in this medium. You kind of get used to certain songs taking yeah. hold for a little while. It's it's just kind of like it's part of the game, right? But you know, for the listener out there, you just got to remember that we are a top forty station. When you come to us for the hits, and we want to give it to you when you c- dial us in, as it were, and, as and it you're were. only li- you're only listening for what thirty minutes. So we got to give you some of those number one hits. Then right people complain there the, the other way. Yeah. I'm not hearing my hits. I didn't hear my song. Where's that song? I requested Miley Cyrus Flowers, and I haven't heard it. Yeah. And then, like, another person will say, I, that, you know, I heard it so many times. It just depends on the rotation well, of how That's a good question. That could be a scheduled. topic. Like, what job do you do that you get sick of, like, say you're a chef? Yeah. yeah. You just want to go home and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, you're sick cannot, of making, uh, right. cannot make, like, fancy another food. fancy meal. Fancy stuff. Or, or can you really enjoy going to other restaurants? Because right. you're judging Are you food. critiquing all the time? I was thinking about directors. Like, Spielberg, does he enjoy... Someone right. else is he's he no dissecting the film. He he's like, oh boy, yeah. I wouldn't use that camera angle. How about you guys? When you listen to other uh, podcasts or shows, do you guys 
Could you enjoy it or do you tear mm-hmm. it down? I enjoy. I enjoy um, it. I enjoy listening to other podcasts, but they're more like um, like NPR ish, you know, uh, like heavy news. On raw feed, we're like making fart jokes. <laughs> no, but I mean, I can enjoy, but there are times where I'm like, ooh, ooh, that was a glaring mistake. You know, it's like something really is sticking out. I'm like, ooh, why are they doing that? Yeah, I, I, I would just, to your, to your Spielberg question, Eric, I feel like anybody who is an actor or an actress or a director in Hollywood can never enjoy just watching something. Because of That's they true. know the behind the scenes of how it originally was cut, what they originally said, how many takes it took to get that. Well, take. Maybe they had a bad day, even an actor. Like that was the day I found out my grandma died. Yeah. Right. I had to go do this scene. I just it's I, messed this up. This is not my best work. I could have done better if I had another day. Exactly right. So great like, question. We don't listen to ourselves. Have you guys ever listened to this no. show much? No. I yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I go back when I'm on air a lot. I want to make sure I sound good. And I'm like, oh, I should have talked louder here. I Listen to my golden here. pipes. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Rula and Ryan show on BK, BK, <laughs> Whopper, Whopper. They owe me a check. <laughs> All right, it is brought to you by Duncan. There is so much stuff going on this weekend. We're going to get to Pride here in a second. But if for some reason you're not going to Pride, I'm going to be hosting an event called Fashion Fitness Swim. This is all benefiting a great cause. It's the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, AFSP.org, if you want to learn more. But it's going to be at the Decorative Center of Houston. This is Saturday night, 7 o'clock. You can find me at 5120 Woodway Drive. Uh, VIP opens up at 7 p.m. General admission is at 8 p.m. But this is a great event. And, you know, it's like it's a lot of fun. It's an annual event dedicated to bringing awareness to a cause that affects millions of people. But it's it's not like a, it's lighthearted. Like, in other words, they're going to have a whole big fashion show. There's going to be photo booths, complimentary hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, a whole bunch of like Houston's most beautiful, multicultural, diverse models. So that is called Fashion Fitness Swim. And that is going to be Saturday at 7. Now, the big news Pride this weekend, Houston's 45th annual Pride Parade. Uh, This year's festivities won't include the daytime festival, but the parade does start at 7 p.m. at Houston City Hall. It'll be led by seven grand marshals. The parade is free, open to all ages. There's going to be cooling buses and free water. Kevin, you and Sam are going to be you're going to be broadcasting there. No, I mean you're going to be like you're going to be not broadcasting, but you're going to be in the booth. Come on, Not keep trying. I'm, I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him try. I mean, we had an entire it's, segment it's about what's gonna happen. Did. It's the thing we did. It's the thing that Rule and I did. We had the president here. Of the, of the yeah. Kendra, shout out Kendra. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you and Sam are gonna be down there. No, stop. <laughs> okay. Here we even have promos running on the here radio and I station. Know, I already, I, and I know what you're doing. <laughs> I am so frustrated with you right now. <laughs> Sam and I will be your host and MC for the 2023 Houston Pride Parade. We will be down on Smith Street where the um, parade starts on the main stage, and um, we'll be there probably starting at 6:30 all the way to the very end. You do not need tickets to go see this parade. Mm-mm. It go there's a there's a route on pridehouston365.org where you can get all the rest of the details. What was her rhyme about hydrate? Or she said something. Uh, about celebrate, hydrate. That's yeah. It. So when you because take a shot, it's gonna be hot. Take a shot of water right after. It's yeah, so exactly. Hot. It's gonna be hot down there. But so like mm-hmm. I said, there are gonna be cooling stations, and they're gonna be handing out water. And but KRBE has a float. We'll be throwing out some cool stuff. That'll y'all. be a lot of fun. All right. That's what's going down in H Town. <laughs> oh my jeez. That sounds so convincing. That's gonna be a lot of it fun. It is gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, you and I have done it like many, many years, and it's a blast. Be always. A great time. Coming up next, Special K <laughs> AI will give Ryan. us a prank call. Will it be funny? <laughs> AI. <laughs> Ryan's on vacation now. That's not even him. That's AI Ryan. You're right. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> So that's a, the Gracie's and Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Forensics are playing into the prank call. Uh, in what way? We're going to find out next on the Roland Ryan Show.